All right. So hello, everybody. My name is Jen Christofferson. And let me pull up here. Uh, and welcome to Defenders of Wildlife Arctic Refuge Paint Night. Uh, tonight with me, I have our Alaskan artist, Carrie Becker. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Defenders of Wildlife, I'll give a brief overview of the work that is done. And then Defenders of Wildlife is a national nonprofit conservation organization. Uh, we protect and restore imperiled species throughout North America by transforming policies and institutions and by promoting innovative solutions. Um, Defenders has the experience and knowledge to engage in any arena to protect wildlife, Congress, the courts, federal and state agencies, academia and public debate, and does so tirelessly and effectively. The field offices give ground in the ecosystems and communities where they are, allowing to engage the public, build support for conservation and develop practical solutions that will stand the test of time. Fueled by the commitment of our members, partners, and supporters, we are building a powerful, enduring voice for wildlife conservation. In Alaska, we work on the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, Tongass National Forest, Eisenbeck National Wildlife Refuge, and endangered species such as the polar bear and the endangered Cook Inlet Beluga Well. So today, um, how the night is gonna go, if you haven't joined us before, I'll give a brief intro to our artist and then we will paint the background uh, quickly. And then we'll have kind of like this 10 minute drying time in between where we're gonna have our Alaska program coordinator or our Alaska program director, Nicole Whittington Evans, um, give a short talk and then we'll jump back to the painting. Um, so in that 10 minutes, your painting should be dry. Um, so that's kind of how the night's gonna go. And then Carrie will wrap us up at the end, uh, finishing up the painting. So hopefully that's okay. And then just as another reminder, make sure you are on mute so we don't have uh, extra sounds coming through. And then I will start out with an intro to Carrie. So Carrie is a local Alaskan artist. Um, she enjoys being inspired by nature's textures, colors, and forms. She graduated with a degree in fine arts from Brigham Young University of Idaho. Um, currently, she is combining her love of creating art with education and believes that through arts, welcoming arms, a love of nature can bring awareness and eagerness to experience the beautiful outdoors. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carrie. Make sure you let me know if you can't hear. Um, and then we'll get started. Oh yeah, I will spotlight Carrie for everyone so that we can all see her canvas a little closer. All right, folks, hey, thanks for joining us. It's better to have some fun making. First thing we're gonna start with is our yellow. And for our red so I'm gonna grab the red and the yellow and I'm gonna mix them together and see what I can do. Uh, the pattern type or whatever. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I got two different colors. Uh, this one is a um, cat yellow medium hue. And this one's just kind of crimson. Uh, so we'll be putting, we'll putting um, two pretty pieces of yellow and red onto our cabinets. So it sounds like we're having a little bit of, yeah, sound issue. So let me put the mic over here. Okay. All right. Is that better for sound, guys? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear Carrie better. I guess you have to say something. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to combine. Uh, put onto our palette a, a, a kind of even amount of both our red and our yellow. I've got this one's a CAD yellow medium hue, and this one's a red. Um, I can't understand. Sound is still not great. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to switch audio. Sorry about the. The problems tonight. Okay, 
and all right <laughs> nothing quite like being in a sound booth Yeah, all right. So for some reason she got kicked out. We're let me um actually let me put the both right me Oh admit. Let's just try with my audio and I'm just gonna move this. Wait. I think it kicked me out before my audio started. Okay. Okay. So let's try that. Can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up. Okay. Start Janet, video. Looks like you're okay. Thumbs up. Let's do flip around. Okay. We can that was not a pretty now. picture of my nose. Sorry, guys. All right. Boop. Okay. Now let's give it a go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so I got my CAD medium light. And then I also have, oh, I'm not spotlighted, Jen. Sorry. They can't see me. Okay, so got my CAD medium light and I got my red, or yeah, so CAD medium hue and I got my red and Tempest is sideways now. <laughs> is it? Mine is? Yeah. What? Oh my gosh, hold on. Let me try. This is what we get for having phones that think they're smarter than us. Yes, I think now. Now does it work? Yes. Okay. What I get. Okay. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So I always recommend that you dip your brushes in the medium that you wash your brushes in every time you paint before you start painting. Reason being is it gets water up into the head of the paintbrush instead of your paint soaking up in. So I got my brushes all wet before I started painting. I got my water. And now I'm gonna start off by painting um, a big chunk of my yellow down. I'm gonna paint from about three fourths up, starting with my yellow. And then I'm gonna just grab, a. when I get to the top part, I'm gonna be grabbing just a tiny bit of red and that way I'll just lightly feather that in, okay? So we're gonna start off. Just to a reminder. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna do that, sunset that bright sunset of yellow. So we're starting off with our yellow at the bottom. All righty, let's get that. And our brushes loaded up, load her up. So about three fourths of the way. And you kind of want to move your brush into that waffle pattern. So our canvases are a waffle. And if you've ever loaded peanut butter into a waffle, you know it's best to go diagonal. So you kind of do some diagonal movements. And then I always like to finish it up with a side swipe. And I hope I don't flick paint all over Jen. We'll see. <laughs> it's a dangerous job. All righty. All right. So I'm moving up my page, or I guess canvas. And as I'm getting to about halfway through the point that I was at, I'm just gonna grab just a tiny little dab of red on there, okay? And I'm gonna mix that just on my pa palette, just a little bit more, okay? Just like that. Now I have a good in-between color. I'm gonna just draw, draw, I'm sorry, drag that in through and do my little crosses. And then a final brush on top and then just blend it down. Okay. And then we're gonna do one more in between color where we're gonna add twice as much of that red that we did that other time. So we're gonna pull that in. 
All right, just like that. And now I have my red, red up at the top. And every sunset's different. So you guys have the benefit of not having to be exactly like mine. So we're just gonna kind of get some of those crosswise ones in because we want to get into those waffles and then start, end up with a stripe on top. Cool. And then I'm just gonna feather it back down with my brush, just like so. All righty. So we're gonna let you guys do that for the next five minutes or so as you work that into your paintings. And then we'll have, um, well, then we'll do a real quick um, uh, talk by Nicole. And then we'll get, and during that time you need it to be completely dry. So don't keep messing with it during the time that Nicole's talking because you're gonna want it completely dry. Okay, guys? Sounds good, get to painting. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. Yeah. I think so, because my, because okay. it picks up radio sounds. Okay. Maybe not as strongly. Oh wait, hold, I have the presentation. Where's, where did it go? Mm -hmm. The pop kiss. Okay. Oh, you put in the other one. You put in the other one. There you go. So that's the left. <laughs> so then everybody can hear me. Yeah. Well, okay, perfect. Hopefully that works. Yeah. Yeah, and if you have any questions, just put them in the chat. And when you finish uh, painting, uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up so you can kind of see for time. Yeah. Got about three more minutes and then we'll do our dry time, okay? All right, I'm seeing thumbs up. Ooh, I'm seeing beautiful sunsets. <laughs> from the photo of the cameras that I can see. Okay. All right, Carrie, should we? Yep, let's have... turn out time over to Nicole if she's ready. Yeah, Nicole, are you? And everyone, you just need to make sure it's dry for our next step, okay? This one. Okay. 
Nicole, are you there? Yep, yep, I'm here. Sorry, um, I'll turn my video on. I want to make sure I'm able to screen share and get this right. Okay, I'll remove the spotlight. We'll see. Um, let's see. So I'm going to share, and hopefully, once I do that, I'll be able yeah. to get into the slideshow mode. How's that looking? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, it's great to be doing another one of these paint nights. Um, my name is Nicole Whittington Evans, and I'm the Alaska Program Director for Defenders of Wildlife. And as Jen said, Defenders of Wildlife is a national nonprofit membership organization dedicated to the protection of all native wild animals and plants in their natural communities. And I'm speaking to you today from the traditional lands of the Denina Athabascan peoples in what is now South Central Alaska. In my talk, I will be addressing lands and wildlife issues in Alaska's Arctic that encompass the traditional homelands of the Gwich'in Athabascan people and Inupiat Eskimo peoples. All of these indigenous cultures, along with many others in Alaska, have subsisted and thrived from the lands and waters surrounding them for millennia and continue to do so today. Their long histories, cultural traditions, and engagement with surrounding lands, water, and wildlife are deserving of much respect, and I am grateful to be able to speak to you about them today. This evening, I will be talking on the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. This next slide um, shows the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which is located in the northeast corner of Alaska and delineated in green on this map uh, with a, the lilac swath across the top as well. Uh, it is a national treasure and the largest and wildest of all of the refuge in, the, in all of the refuges in um, America's National Wildlife Refuge system. As an intact unit, uh, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge harbors the greatest biodiversity of any protected area north of the Arctic Circle. Its eastern boundary is the Canadian border, and the lilac colored swath reaching east to west along the coastal region of this map is polar bear onshore critical habitat, which equals 4% of the total critical habitat um, and it is becoming increasingly important as sea ice recedes. This is the most important onshore denning habitat, the, the portion of, of critical habitat that, was if, that is within the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is the most important onshore denning area for Southern Beaufort Sea polar bears um, and hosts the greatest density of dens uh, anywhere in America's Arctic. This next map uh, of the Arctic Refuge shows congressionally designated wilderness lands in lighter green and recommended wilderness lands in darker green. The designated wilderness lands have the most restrictive protections of any lands uh, and do not allow road building or industrial development. Um, this map also shows the location of the Inupiat community of Kaktovik in the black box at the top of the map along the Arctic Ocean coast and the Gwich'in community of Arctic Village along the southern border. The coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge is considered the biological heart of the refuge. In addition to polar bear critical habitat, it is key caribou calving habitat for the approximately 218,000 head porcupine caribou herd and nesting habitat for millions of migratory birds that come from continents across the globe. One can also find muskox, brown bears, wolves, wolverine, 
Arctic fox, ground squirrels, and many other species um, on the coastal plain. The southern Beaufort Sea population of polar bears is found in the Arctic refuge. Its population range also spans parts of Canada and Alaska, in addition to Alaska. It has declined precipitously from approximately 1,800 bears in the late 1980s to only an estimated 900 bears today. That's a 50% reduction in three decades with a 40% reju reduction just since the year 2000. Extensive sea ice loss in the range of the Southern Beaufort Sea population is considered the cause of the population decline. And it is one of the most imperiled on the globe. There are 19 total polar bear populations across the circumpolar Arctic. This slide um, shows the spectacle of uh, the, the, you know, the natural spectacle of the porcupine caribou herd, again, around 218,000 um, in, in the herd itself. And um, the, the herd right now is on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. So this photograph is looking from north to south and um, the, the mountains in the background are the Brooks Range. Um, and you can tell that the coastal plain itself is relatively flat. Um, a tundra landscape and um, every year the porcupine caribou herd travels to this area after one of the longest migrations of any land mammals um, on the globe. This next map is really a, a great map showing the migratory corridors of the porcupine caribou herd which winters in Canada and travels across just incredible, you know, terrain, mountains, crossing rivers. Um, this is again one of the longest migratory routes of any land mammal on the globe, um, and they do it every year to reach the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. Um, they not only do this, but the females are doing this while pregnant and just about to drop their calves which they do in um, mid to, to late June, uh, you know, once they arrive on the coastal plain. This map also shows the Gwich'in communities in both Canada and Alaska that rely on this herd. And finally, it shows that Canada has protected lands adjacent to the Arctic refuge, making this area, you know, together with Canada, truly one of the last great uh, conserved areas on the globe. This slide um, includes photos of the people of this area and their communities, again, which have subsisted off the land for, for thousands of years. Robert Thompson is featured uh, in the top left. Uh, he's an Inupiat and polar bear view viewing guide uh, lives in the community of Kaktovik, which is pictured to the right of him. Uh, this is a coastal village within the coastal plain adjacent to the Beaufort Sea. And Inupiat peoples are whalers and marine-based subsistence hunters primarily, but they also rely on caribou, fish, and other resources found on the coastal plain. Sarah James, a Gwich'in elder and spokesperson from Arctic Village on the southern boundary of the Arctic Refuge, is pictured on the bottom left or the bottom right here. And to the left of her is her village, Arctic Village. She is working with her tribe to protect the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge, uh, which the Gwich'in consider sacred ground. They are, they are the caribou people. And the reason the ground is sacred is that the porcupine caribou herd, which they have subsisted from for thousands of years, bear their calves uh, and, and strengthen their calves before, you know, and themselves before starting their great migration south again. Um, and that is why they consider this sacred ground. The Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, which passed in 1980 
is one of the largest conservation acts ever to pass Congress. And it protected entire ecosystems, ensured protection of diverse wildlife populations, and prioritized and maintained opportunities for uh, those subsisting um, to access resources and to sustain traditional ways of life, which is really unique in our entire legal system. Um, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge was, uh, well, originally established in 1960 during the Eisenhower administration, it was greatly expanded um, and uh, also uh, renamed to be the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, and in the act of the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, uh, the purposes for uh, you know, establishing this refuge were identified and they include to conserve fish and wildlife populations and habitats in their natural diversity, to fulfill the international treaty obligations that we have entered into as a country, to provide the opportunity for continued subsistence uses by local residents and to ensure water quality and necessary water quantity within the refuge. Unfortunately, in 2017, when the um, Tax Act was passed, um, a new purpose was established for the refuge, which is to um, allow for an oil and gas leasing program to occur within the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. Um, this map, pictured now um, on the screen, is a map of oil and gas activities in Alaska's Arctic and their impacts to onshore polar bear critical habitat, including in the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. Um, both Arctic Refuge and the National Petroleum Reserve Alaska in the Western Arctic are delineated here. Uh, you can see the hatched area shows that the majority of Alaska's Arctic is open to oil and gas leasing and most all of polar bear critical habitat and Alaska's Arctic coastal area are available for leasing except for the most Northeastern portion of the Arctic refuge. Uh, and, but but the, ha the hatched area within the coastal plain of the Arctic refuge is now uh, available for leasing. In 2021, just before the Trump administration left uh, office, a lease sale occurred in the Arctic Refuge coastal plain. And this is a, a map of the leases that were made available and the leases that were sold. Uh, the leases that were sold are colored here in purple and they are found um, on the western boundary of the coastal plain <clears throat> of the Arctic Refuge. Um, this is, you know, an, a really unfortunate situation that we are uh, working to overturn. Um, nine leases were sold, and um, when the Biden administration came in, it paused any action associated with the leases. Um, the Biden administration also suspended any exploration uh, from occurring on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. And they are now pursuing a new environmental analysis of the Arctic Refuge leasing program. Uh, and we, along with conservation and indigenous partners, uh, have submitted scoping comments for this new supplemental environmental impact statement. Uh, we submitted those in October and we anticipate a draft supplemental environmental impact statement later this year. Um, this new environmental analysis is really the result of a lawsuit that we and our indigenous partners um, filed. And so we're glad that we're in a kind of a new trajectory um, for the Arctic Refuge Coastal Plain at this point. Uh, we plan to continue to work with the Biden administration to um, 
ensure that, you know, first and foremost, our hope is that we are able to overturn the Tax Act provision, which allowed um, the oil and gas leasing to occur in the first place. Uh, so we will be working with Congress in order to try to overturn the, the, you know, the language that opened the Arctic Refuge to um, oil and gas leasing. But in addition to that, we are working with the Biden administration to ensure that if, if they continue to be required by law to offer an oil and gas leasing program, that it will be the most restrictive and the most protective to the incredible resources um, on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. So what you all can do to help at this point in time is to write your members of Congress, tell them uh, how you feel about oil and gas leasing in the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. You can write letters to the editor of your local newspapers, which um, are very helpful for educating others and for spreading the word. And you can also invite your friends and family to do the same. Um, I would also encourage you to stay in touch with defenders uh, to learn about future actions uh, with respect to the Arctic Refuge. And um, once that draft supplemental environmental impact statement is out uh, and, and available for public review, there will be another opportunity for the public to comment. And uh, we would be happy to let you know and even help you with um, you know, pointing out some uh, areas that you can discuss in your comments. Um, so that is really all I have uh, today. And I want to thank you so much for joining. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may you might have. Thanks, Nicole. Um, that, was, that was great. I love the maps. Um, <laughs> we're probably going to move on. And if you do have questions, like feel free to drop them in the chat. I think, Nicole, if it's OK, if you stay on for maybe a minute or two and see if there's any um, questions that come up and then if you have to leave. Some um, great pictures, yeah. Go for it. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, perfect. And then I think Carrie's going to go ahead and we're going to keep this rolling. I know we're a little bit behind just because of some of the technical difficulties <laughs> we've had today. Um, but hopefully it's smooth sailing from now on. Um, and Carrie, back to you. Cool. All right. So we're going to be taking um, our kind of like one inch ish brush and we're going to be taking our purple. And I've got dioxazine purple, but you could also mix together your red and your blue because um, I did put purple as optional. But I'm going to I'm going to cheat and just use the premix stuff. And I'm also going to grab a little bit of my white. You don't need a ton of white for this portion. We're just going to be dabbing into it. Yeah, we're going to be doing the mountains. So, all right. So we got our purple and our white for our mountains. We're going to take um, our piece of chalk, or if you have a pencil, that's fine. And we're going to be making a horizontal line about about a little bit above where we ended our yellow, just so that we can make sure that we're completely covering our yellow. I'm gonna pull my canvas down to do the straight line real quick because I'm terrible at straight lines drawing like this. I'll bring it back in just a second, okay? I don't think I'm spotlighted, just so you know. It might be an issue. Way. And I think I'm spotted again. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, so you're going to draw your straight line across your horizon. I love chalk as my medium for sketching things out while you're doing that because all you need to do is grab a little edge of a paper towel and get it wet. And all of a sudden, you have a perfect eraser. You don't want to scrub too much, but say you mess up, there you go. It's erased. You let it dry for a second and you can redraw it. So, that's why I prefer the chalk, but pencil works just fine. Just sometimes um, when you're erasing um, with an eraser, all those gummy little pieces that come off of it end up all over your painting and mixing in with your paint, which is not great. So that's why I prefer chalk, but go ahead and draw your straight line and 
then we're gonna be doing our mountain shapes, which is fun. Give me a second to finish up that straight line. All right. So for our mountains, I am going to be doing mountains kind of in the distance because they're kind of far off. Um, these are the Brooks Range, I think you were telling me, right? The Brooks Range Mountains. Um, and I'm going to start off with just, and I know it's probably a little hard to see my yellow with, um, with the white chalk. So I apologize. Let's see. Well, maybe I should. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to use a marker so you guys can see. So, all right. So we're going to come up a little bit and getting a little bit of a section here. And then I'm going to come down with a small V and then a little, and they're, these all are not too far above each other. So I'm going to, let's see, maybe less than an inch between the top of this one and the top of this one. And then I'm going to draw a line going like this. It's counter sectioning or cutting across the section of that I just drew. We're going to go just a hair above the mountain that we just finished. And we're going to go down like that. And then another one. And this one's going to be a hair above this one. Nice. The kind of nicely even stepped mountains. And then we'll go down a little bit. So this kind of creates a little U shape and then we'll go down like this. Now this one's gonna cut across again like this. Boop. Sorry. Boop. And then we're gonna come down and sweep across the page like that, okay? Now I did that in marker so I can't erase what I screwed up. But <laughs> um, you, uh, if you did it with the chalk, you can erase it and fidget around with it a little bit. Um, and then we're just going to be painting it with our mixture of light purple. So I'm going to take this purple. We're going to give you a section here in just a second to complete these steps too, if you need a little bit of time. But I'm going to be making a light purple. Okay. And I'm just going to paint over and block in those mountains real quick in my purple. And I'm my um, dioxazine purple is a little um, opaque. Oh, sorry, not opaque. Um, what is it see through? Oh my gosh, my brain's blinking. Um, <laughs> huh? Is it opaque? No, opaque is when you can't see through it, right? What's it called? Oh, my brain. Okay, it's been a long week, folks. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> is this is Saturday. My brain's shut off a little bit. Okay, so. You can see a little bit through my purple paint because of the type of paint that I selected. Transparent. Transparent. Dang it. Hey, we both have the same Transparent. <laughs> my purple paint's a little transparent. So I, the white that I'm adding in is uh, the titanium white, and that adds opacity, which is the word that was only coming to my mind. <laughs> and so that helps me cover up those black lines that I did. In the chalk, you don't have that option, that uh, problem. Uh, but if, say, you have pencil, which is what the point I was trying to get to, you might have a little bit more of a problem covering up those pencil lines. So you may need to do a little bit more white in your first coat if you have that pencil line, just so you know. Okay. So we're just going to block in that purple real quick and get that going. All right, so go ahead and block in that purple. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that and get those mountains looking nice and pretty, okay? And just ask us any questions if you have any questions, okay?
All right, folks, hopefully you're done painting your mountains purple. Um, and while that's drying, because we're going to do our next section on top of it, we're going to paint some like white details, a little bit of snow on there. Um, but we're going to be painting this bottom half blue going down. So the blue we're, we're going to use as a dark blue, um, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, um, what kind of whatever blue floats your boat. And, oh, shoot, that one squared out at me. That's fun. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna do our blue and a little bit of our white again. So we're just changing it up a little bit out of the tube. And if you have a little bit of purple on your brush still from painting the mountains, it's not gonna be that big of a deal quite yet. So that's okay. Rinse it out a little bit, but it's not a huge deal if you have a little bit of purple. And I'm just gonna be massively painting this whole bottom area blue. So I'm gonna use my big brush again, okay? So. Mix in some white and the blue. Okay, a nice sky kind of blue Arctic. It's an interesting color that um, is made by the sunlight passing through the ice. It's a color that I've never seen anywhere else. It's really kind of cool. Um, and then the snow piles up on top of it. It's just really pretty. I love that blue. It's actually one of my favorite colors. That and also the blue that comes. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen pictures of Seward, Alaska, but their ocean has this like greenish blue tint to it. I love that color. That's one of my favorites. I think it's pretty popular in like um, design right now. It's a pretty in color, which is helpful. I cannot open my tube of paint. Nah, fine. It's stuck. I Internet doesn't work. Paint tubes won't open. Well, you know, I normally have pliers <laughs> on my desk. Just because sometimes, sometimes you leave a little bit of paint on that rim and then you can't open it for anything. Open sesame, nothing works. You're just like, ugh. You just kind of have to give in and use the pliers. What sucks is when you your pliers go through the... Uh, little plastic bits that help you to uh, grip it and you kind of rip through them. That's always terrible. But a little bit of water. All right, just painting down some blue. And then that's letting our purple to dry so that we can allow it to have our little bits of snow here in a sec. And it's okay if you have a little bit of a, some hills in the back as you're coming across. The wind in the Arctic pulls up big ice heaves of just, or I guess they're not, I guess they're just like, they're kind of like dunes, yes. snow dunes <laughs> kind of deal. It's kind of cool. And like polar bears, that's what they build their dens into is the sides of snow. Yeah, snow to, dens and stuff. So, which is one of the things that we're doing the art right now. Yeah. And I do have a it's lighter detection for trying to find four years in, but they were not very good. I think it's a little LIDAR. I mean, that feels like we wouldn't trust its answers. Why did they use LIDAR as the name? Lying to us. No. All right. So I got a nice blue, blue ice going on across the bottom. So we're going to just let that dry. And if you need to pull out your hair blow dryer, we're going to recommend you do that. We'll let you do that for the next. Let's go uh, six, seven minutes, okay? So next six, seven minutes, we'll have the purple, will be dry, we'll have the hair blow dryer on it, and we'll have this blue dry, so hopefully. All right, give you guys a couple minutes. Talk to you soon.
All right, guys. So one of the ways I like to do to test to see if the painting's dry is after I've used the blow dryer, I'll take the back of my hand and I'll just tap it real quick and see if the paint is tacky still. If it's tacky still, I need to hit it with the blow dryer for a little bit longer. But or if there's paint obviously on the back of your hand, <laughs> then you probably need to hit it with the blow dryer for a little bit longer. But typically the backs of my hands stay the most paint free. I mean, my hand tops, the, my fingerprints, not really. So that's why I use the back. And then you don't push into the paint with your finger and put a dent in it. Um, it's because paint sensitive that way. It gets its feelings offended. So, but yeah, so. And in case anybody's wondering, uh, just because I mentioned the LIDAR, um, that works on the principle of radar, but it uses light from a laser. Um, and LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging. Uh, I know the more accurate way of finding former bins is using dogs, which doesn't surprise me because seems a little intrusive though. <laughs> yeah, they're sniffers woo, 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 woo. way better than what we have. If we could provide technology that simulates sniffers, but that would be interesting. <laughs> or a bear sniffer. Yeah. There you go. Was it uh gr oh, polar bears can smell something? Oh man, it's from across the sea ice. They can smell something from. Yeah, they can smell smoke across the sea, sea ice. ice for how many miles? You told me once, and I was like, "Oh man, it's, uh, they're make or do work." I apologize. <laughs> I love random facts like that. Not that my brain holds on to them, but I like they're interesting. I can smell a seal on the ice. Twenty miles away. And I can sniff out a seal's bin that has been covered with snow. And even part of the seal's air hole is in life up to a mile away. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Or, I mean, also if you cook fish in the break room, is a similar distance of the smell of traveling. So, you know, <laughs> it's probably seals smell a lot like that. And so it's probably a similar experience. So, so it would be helpful if you give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you're tracking on time. Yeah, we'll give them about two more minutes. I was thinking. Couple more minutes. Yeah. And I'll kind of look out for those thumbs up if you can do that for me. So we know if we're moving too fast, too slow. Okay, pace. Yeah, okay, <laughs> pace. Steady, slow, steady. Things are nice. One of my coworkers, she says, um, off like a herd of turtles and I'd never heard that before and I was like that's hilarious first off I imagined a herd of turtles like gallivanting throughout a space I was like that's pretty great actually <laughs> so let's see but a group of turtles is called a male or a flotilla <laughs> <laughs> that a flotilla because it looks like they're floating <laughs> maybe Bale, like a bale of straw. <laughs> Interesting. There's some pretty, like, I really think, like, I don't know, is it a zoologist that names that type of stuff? But they're just like, oh, we're going to make this one funny. <laughs> like, yeah. like a, I mean, they all like like a, a um, group of crows is like a murder or whatever because they look yeah. ominous. So like, ah! They're super smart, though. So. <laughs> they could kill you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like pigeons would have a really funny name. Besides, like <laughs> pigeons, like pigeons, a flock of pigeons, probably just a flock or something. Like that. Like a group of polar bears. Mm. It's called a pack or a sleuth. Sleuth. Ooh, like 007. Da -da -da -da. Oh, wait, that's not 007. Is yeah. that, is it? Okay. Yeah. I was like, did I do Pink Panther on accident? Might have. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. We got some thumbs ups. Help the check. <laughs> no? People still working? Okay. We, I threw a lot at them. They got to make their mountains and paint the foreground. It's a lot. I'm oh, like, where on the website are the prompts for you? Um, okay. YouTube, right? Well, yes and no. There's points to find on YouTube. 
they are. I know once you find one, you can find the other ones pretty easily. Like we do a close up of a polar bear's face, and he has northern lights back behind him. That one's really fun to do. Um, we did an otter. That was fun. I like the oh, otter yeah, one. Sea otter. The sea otter was really fun. Ooh, okay, I found the link. Really Let me playful. Drop it in the chat for everybody. Yeah. Because it will have the Tongass National Forest Paint Night, Polar Bear, Eisenbeck, Sea Otter. Sea Otter Habitat one, too, right? Uh, yeah, Sea Otter Habitat and Sea Otter and Luke. Beluga? Beluga. So fun um, ones for sure. Okay, so I just dropped in the chat um, the link. And I think I just looked up. So it's going to be, I just Googled the hundreds of wildlife videos and then you kind of scroll down through the page and everybody's mm -hmm. algorithm is different, but look for the title event videos to hundreds of wildlife. Um, mm -hmm. And you should be able to find all the videos that we've done not just the paint nights but other videos too so great question um, all right so folks we're going to get our chalk out again um and we're going to be um just kind of putting down little markers for ourselves on which mountains go forwards and which ones go backwards so um because i painted over the top of mine so I kind of like to do like a zigzag almost, kind of like that. Almost like Harry Potter lightning bolt scar, almost. And then I decide which side I want my light to be hitting. And I want my light to come from this side, really. So I'm gonna color that in with chalk just to kind of mark it for myself. And I'm just gonna keep consistently doing that side to side. And then kind of mark down. And this is why we love that it erases because we don't like that. So the mountain's coming off from this side. And then we got a big bright mountain right here. And let's do another one right over here. Sorry, I'm looking at my reference real quick to see like what's what the shape of the mountains were. Cool. I like that. Cool. So once you block in which side your light's on. I mean, if you are really good and consistent, you wouldn't even have to use the chalk. Um, but it just kind of reminds you where you're hitting at. And you're just going to take um, your pencil size brush, so your little five ish paint brush, and load it up kind of with some drier paint. Um, so, kind of, and you're going to fuzz over it. And the way I say fuzz it sounds strange, but we're just going to lightly. Unless you're Carrie and you screwed up in the first second. Sorry. <laughs> All right. But that's good. We can always paint back over that. That's the beauty of our acrylic paint. It dries really quickly. So you're just going to kind of just lightly fluff into it with your pencil brush and it leaves, and you're going to be kind of brushing off the chalk as you go. Kind of leaves just a light impression of white. And we just want the lightest impression of snow. And I know most of you are thinking, um, Carrie, you're making this look so easy and this is a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I just. Every mountain's different. Yep. You, you can add character. However, that's the greatest thing about mountains is they don't have to be exactly the same. They're organic. They're organic which is why I was like, oh yeah, we got to do, um, we got to do some landscapes that's easy like all you know everyone has different bushes and lands and all that fun stuff so i'm adding a bit of white on this side of my mountain right here leading up to my first one and then i'm just going to bring one down from this edge kind of connecting that through and then once you get it to kind of where you like it i'm going to let this dry real quick and then i can take that slightly damp paper or paper towel or towel and you can just brush it across really lightly and it will take off that chalk and then you can kind of gauge where you're at so and you just go back and forth between those stages until you get the mountains where you like it and we're going to give you about let's say 10 minutes to do that well let's do seven minutes 
seven minutes to do that and then um then we'll move on okay and just go ahead and ask questions if you come across them um we're just gonna be painting back and forth between wiping off our chalk and putting on our white paint okay sounds good I don't recommend dropping your entire paintbrush into your bugger water. Makes it uh, not so, it's a very wet fishing trip to find it again, but hopefully you guys are getting the, getting those whites marked in. And if you, um, if you, let's see, yeah. So if you kind of brush it off with a light, light wet paper towel, you can kind of see more like what you left and what you need to read back, touch back in on. Okay, so got a couple more minutes and then we'll get back to painting together.
All right, folks, hopefully we got those all mailed in and our, um, if you messed up like I did, I went back in with some of the, my other purple ones just covered up the mistakes, which is great. You can go bounce back and forth. All right, so we're gonna go back to our foreground and our, we're gonna be working with our blue and white again. Um, you don't really need all that much blue quite yet, um, but we're gonna mostly hit in our whites. So you'll need white on your palette with a little bit of blue, just to be able to tint it. Um, Cause we're gonna make a little bit of some mixed areas. So, oh, are we? Oh, didn't realize we had that much foreground covered up. Okay, cool. All right, so we get, I got my white and my blue and I'm gonna be dipping mostly into my white first. And I'm just kind of, I've got blue on inside my brush from last time still so it's kind of tinting it already you can see it's a nice light light blue and we're just going to be kind of hitting mostly our lightest whites we want to be farthest away because we're not seeing down into those little snow cavities and all those fun little areas as much so we're at, we've got lots of our wider areas up towards the top of the painting we're just gonna kind of sweep it back and forth and very general because you know the uh what's great is the wind is very random so um we can just use that to our advantage and just throw in some streaks so i was very careful towards the top when i laid in that first line but after that you just kind of randomly throw them in and let your brush kind of guide where those peaks and valleys are going to be and I kind of created more of like a figure down, like, because animals tend to use the path of least resistance. So I figure my polar bear is gonna kind of walk up this path, but you know, your polar bear could be going things at the hard way, you know, could be, could be a track star. So, all right, so got some, well, you know what? Some of us like to exercise, okay? Not all of us, you know, some of us like to go after that bod, you know? He likes it trim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, a skinny bear is not a good bear, right? They didn't do their job correctly. All right, so we threw in some of those like light blues. We're gonna let you guys track around and do that for a little bit. And then we'll come back with and make it even lighter on the tops. And then we'll make some of our darkers dark and then we'll hit it with, um, We'll hit it with a blower dryer and then we'll get to paint the polar bear. Yeah, so that's just a, a quick recap on, or a quick overview of what we're gonna be doing next. So paint in this area and then we'll move on to the next section together, okay? All right, see you, talk to you in a sec.
All right, you guys, we're gonna grab some more white because I'm already out. So um, go through that white so quickly. I think that's my most used color. <laughs> white, yep, white and like um, blues, I think. So, all right, so um, I still have a little bit of blue inside my brush. Um, so I'm just gonna utilize that amount um, to do, to add some blue. And so it's not just white that we're putting on the page but it's gonna be an even lighter white than what we just put down. And we're gonna get that loaded up nice and nice and thick on our brush. Cool. And we're just gonna hit the tops of things. And we're just gonna kinda tap it into it, kinda make, make ourselves some little tappy taps of bright white on the tops of things. If you need to go and switch to a smaller brush, feel more than welcome to. Um, I like the big broad gestures, but if you were to do a smaller brush, it would kind of look more like, where did my smaller brush go? Oh, okay. The one I didn't drop into the water. Okay. If you were to do a smaller brush, it's kind of the same stuff. It's just kind of tap in. You just have to do more taps per, per level kind of deal. So anyway, so use big or small, whichever suits you best. We're just gonna hit the kind of the tops of whatever hills you were making. So like this one kind of goes up like this. So I'm gonna hit the tops right there, moving up like that. And then I'll just kind of blend it a little bit into my piece. That way it kind of looks like that, kind of like that. Okay, and so we'll just go around and everyone's mount, everyone's little snow dunes are gonna be a little different. So, but the the, the concept is, is we're going to be hitting the tops with white and then blending down into the till, um, till you get down to the bottom and kind of let it just dry brush into it. Okay, we'll be doing this for next five or so minutes and then um, we'll get to get to some of the darker paints. Okay, all right, see you in about five.
All right, I'll give you about two more minutes and then we'll move on to doing the polar bear, yeah. All right, folks, we're going to get our chalk out or our pencils, depending on uh, what situation you'd like to use. We're going to be drawing our polar bear now. Excited. It's the best part. All right. So the first thing we're going to be starting off with is a circle. If you're not comfortable doing circles, you could find a random object like a cup or a lid to kind of utilize. But um, I also have kind of a tip for you if you would like to just draw it without using a cup or a circle. So I like to, if I'm having trouble, I will do a cross first and then I will use, cause I'm using chalk, right? So I have my fingers, I can go like this and mark. And then you kind of do the same thing here. And it's really hard to see cause it's white on white for you but on your own painting, you'll be able to see where you marked. And then you now have an equal distance between where you marked here where you marked here. And then all you have to do is connect this line to this line and round it out. And then do the same thing, round it out, round it out, round it out. Pretty simple. You know, just do some crossed lines and then you use your fingers with the chalk and let it guide you. Let the chalk guide the way, kind of like the force, but a little bit different probably. All right, so we have our first circle. And then our next circle, we're gonna take about the same size that we have of one of those crosses. So we can use our fingers again. I got chalk on the tips. I'm just gonna space it. Um, so probably a little bit shorter front. So I'm gonna go like this and mark that. And then probably a little bit shorter from that, I'm gonna make my circle. So right about there. So I'm gonna do my cross thing again. So there's my cross right there. I'm gonna make it into a circle. Okay, so we got our two circles right next to each other. Let you guys draw those out. Let's see if I can make these darker for you. Thanks. The, the cross thing really helps and then like the chalk is nice because it kind of, it attaches to whatever you put it on. So. Um, you can also use cheat sheets too, if you're like using pencil. So you'll just, if you're using, I guess I should talk to the camera instead of Jen, sorry. So <laughs> if you're using like pencil, you can utilize a cheat sheet. So you would mark out with a pencil while people are doing their circles. You can just listen to me ramble. 
So you mark out the center of your circle, the edge of the circle, edge of the circle. And then you just fold it in half and do this and then mark it, mark it like that. So I'm gonna draw this out in the pen so you guys can maybe somehow see it. Struggle. Nope. I forgot that pen does not mark well on top of chalk. So hopefully that helps you see it though. As long as you guys can see it a little bit better, I'm happy. Okay. But what can you see it better without the light or with the light? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. It's circles, so it's not that fascinating quite yet. We'll get more interesting here in a bit. <laughs> okay. So we got our circles down. We get, oh, also there is the instructions to the polar bear in a PDF printout that was available with the supply list. If you need like, if you need to go by it through the steps a lot slower, more than welcome to utilize that. Um, it just doesn't come with my fun commentary is the only thing. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a wonky avocado. So um, that's the easiest way to describe it. You got, so we're kind of connect this, we're gonna take this line and we kind of follow it through and act almost like we're bending it around the shape, almost like, um, I guess, like how something orbits the sun or something. It just kind of follows the shape and then gets thrown off, right? So we're gonna just use that and curve it out. And that's the bottom of our avocado. And then we're gonna go from the about a little bit, our highest point of our circle, we're gonna go down just a little bit. And we're gonna connect that up to our head or our little circle. Just a little for you. Kind of looks like you took an avocado and you went and you kind of squished it a little bit. So let you guys do that part. I feel like we should play that. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna show you something really cute, just, just for funsies. She's a little puppy. She's a little puppy. Because who doesn't love a puppy? She's jinx. She's so cute. She's squeaky. Anyway, sorry. We, now we'll resume our normal broadcasting. Sorry. Yeah. Gotta have a cuteness break, obviously. All right, so we're going to move on to the next section, which is the little nosy. Take our chalk, and we have our center line from drawing earlier, right? So we're going to just draw that line a little bit farther out. That's going to be the tip of our the kind of, I guess it's almost like a diamond we're shaping up here, but it's a little uneven. So we got the top of the diamond. We're going to go kind of more flat across like that, and we'll go just short of the top of the nose right there probably you can see that pretty good okay and then we're going to go say about so about the same distance from the bottom of the head from the top of the head we're going to draw a line going out so it's going to be like a little box let's see if i can see if i can highlight it a little bit more with this Okay, can you see that better? Besides me covering it up with my paper? <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's darker. Come on, come on, Pam. I know, sorry, you're probably just seeing the back of my head more than anything right now, but. <laughs> Yeah. 
there's kind of the diamond shape we're going for. Go a little bit closer with the camera. Okay, kind of like that. Just a little bit off the top of the head and a little bit off the bottom of the circle. Oh man, shake the cam, sorry. I need one of those stabilizers apparently. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put you back in the mouth. Cool beans. all right so we're going to do the next fun part we're going to do the back leg and we're going to kind of use that same curve like we did for the belly we're going to use that same curve and we're going to come down off off his back or her back i mean gender neutral is their back i guess all right it's so kind of like that just kind of swinging out and I would say about one, so that same section to the center of your circle, you're probably gonna go about the same distance down to the bottom of the foot. So, so between this distance right here and this distance right here is about the same distance, okay? And then you just draw that line down. There we go, we got a foot. So this is the back right foot. Oh yes. <laughs> one day one. It comes together quickly out of a flamingo into a ball bear though. Right, one yeah. So okay all right so we're going to do the forefoot which we're going to use this this line from the big circle we're going to kind of connect it down kind of do it's not quite a straight line you're going to kind of curve it ever so slightly and you're going to go about um just a hair's breadth or like a finger width maybe from the bottom of this foot you're going to go stop right about that same about a finger's width from hitting the bottom of that you're going to do end that foot and then bring it to you're going to do you can do a straight line from the front this is about so if the cross of the big of the little circle sorry you take the cross of the little circle and you bring it straight down this line is just a hair in front of that if that helps just a hair All right. So, and just a, as a reminder, if we are going too fast, or you want to watch it again, or do it with family members, um, that website that I dropped in the chat, um, I think we drop again. I think it's, um, you can just go to there. Give us a couple weeks to to get it done. Um, what we could do on the website and watch the replay. Yeah. Instant replay. Yeah. We just got bored by the first 10 minutes. Of the <laughs> the yeah. And then mute us all the weird commentary, of course. So, <laughs> all righty. So, we have two different options for our hind foot. The one that we have, um, the one that I'm, that's in the directions is the back foot is down over here. But you can also just make a little square down here if you want to make it easier on yourself. And you just do two little squares in the corners here, or you can do a foot going hind that way. So fit whatever feels better for your bear. Um, I personally like the hind feet together because I think um, he's he's more he's more posed. Maybe it's not as natural. I don't know, but I kind of like it. And I like to put his little, his little booty tail right there. It's just a little, it's just a little bump because um, he's got a big booty and we love that our polar bears have big booties. All right. So that's just a little bump that's 
right where our back leg hits our circle. We're just doing a, just a little tail bump right there. <laughs> like a college professor with chalk everywhere. Ah! You gotta wipe it on your butt. Right, yes, <laughs> of course. No, no, what you do is you go up to someone else that has black flack and then you like make a smiley face on their knee. That's how you do it. All righty. So we got our little squares for other little feet. And we got our front, our front and our back. Um, and now we're going to kind of erase at this head real quick, just so that we can kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So that you guys can kind of get a little bit more information, hopefully. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So my now we're going to be putting in the ears. So his little ear. Where my chapter? He ran away. Okay. So the ears um, go kind of at the center of where our circle was. Just a that's going to start just a tad bit above it. So the center of my circle was right here. So I'm kind of making almost a C shape around the center of my circle. Um, and you can just kind of eyeball it. And then I have another little, just little, little, little C on the back of the head, back behind my piece, okay? And then we'll paint in the nose with black here in a bit. So, all right, guys. So now we're gonna push, put this where it's at and we're gonna um, go back and forth between our pen and uh, I'm sorry, not our pen, my goodness, our white paint. And we're gonna just kind of, oh, this is not white paint, geez. <laughs> I had blue on that, nope. We're gonna go back and forth between our painting and our, um, man, it's still blue, what the heck? I must have a big chunk of slightly dried blue paint in there and that's, like getting in. You're welcome to have blue on there. Yes, you can. Because their skin is black. So, I mean, you know, they're almost blue. Okay. Well, if you look at the photographs closely, there's a lot of steel, but that's from the steel. Actually, it turns their coat yellow. <laughs> so, yes. you can see, like, the photos of the polar bears that yeah. have slightly yellow tinted coats. It's from the fat from the animals that they're eating. So. Okay. There you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to take our. Um, our pencil size brush. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pushing that white paint up to our chalk line. And let me, let me do this chalk line so you guys can see it. So I'm just kind of painting just on the inside of that chalk line. And I'm gonna be painting it white. And then I wanna keep this line, right? So I'm gonna paint on the outside of each chalk line like this. And then when it's dry and you take a wet piece of cloth and you just wipe in between that, you can see the blue coming through and that kind of becomes your line that you're gonna trace over with, with your black marker. That's kind of the concept we're gonna be doing. So you're essentially pushing the white paint up to the line. And let me do it with a big one so you guys can kind of see it. So when I'm pushing the paint, I'm gonna do big blue so that you guys can see. So if this is my chalk line. So this is my chalk line. I'm pushing the paint kind of like this, up like that, and then pushing from the other side when I'm dealing with where I'm bare on bare. I'm pushing them here. And then when these are both dry, you erase the chalk in between, and then you can kind of see your underpainting. And then you'll be able to take your black pen at the end and you'll draw over the top with our black. So that's the concept to be able to keep our, our tracing, I guess, of the chalk. That's kind of how you um, keep it both ways and be happy with both worlds. Um, or, you know, you can just do it with marker and then kind of paint over it with the white. And you can see through the white to the marker as well. So. What we're, what, our, what we're our next step to do while we're quiet for the next 10 minutes is we're just gonna be painting the whole thing white 
um, and just avoid painting on top of those chalk lines like we did with the, with the little example. And then our background will be our lines here in a bit, okay? All right, we'll, break, we'll uh, let you guys paint that in for next five or so minutes and we'll come back in just a sec, okay?
All right, folks, we just need the next part. We're just going to need a little dab of black, and we're going to just be making a little bit of gray and going around, and we'll be doing his nose real quick. So he needs a little black nose, and we need to do some shadows. So I'm going to use my smaller brush for my shadow work. And oh, that was way too much black. OK, so it's just a light bit of gray. It's not super extreme. Okay, wait. Don't use any of that color that I just made because that is not the right one. Too much. All right, so more of this color gray. So it's like just a hair above the color we just made. And so we're gonna be hitting the back of the leg with that gray. Kind of up under the, underneath the, the little uh, tail. Just kind of blend it in with like kind of a dry brush movement. And you can kind of soothe it in later if you need to by adding a little bit of extra white. So hitting the back of that leg. And then we are going to hit the underside of the belly with that color. Underside of the belly. And then we're going to hit the feet that are underneath the body. So if you have one foot um, all back here, you can do that one with that darker color of gray. Or if they're both placed underneath the body, you're going to hit it with that dark gray. Okay, like that. And then we're going to hit the back of this leg with that same color, just like a just like a kind of a stripe and they kind of come up like that. And then we're gonna hit the underside of the chin, the two new chin chins, and back behind the ear. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And one more on the face. So right between where the face and the nose are. So kind of like right around the back of that circle, we're gonna hit too. All right. Oops. Okay. Paintbrush one wonky. All right. Sound good. We're gonna hit um, additional white until you know you can no longer see the blue, um, but you can do that after the fact and kind of just refine it. Oh man, I did not wash. I'm gonna put that out. Hold on. Make sure your paintbrush is washed out before you do your highlights. But I would, I'm going to add more highlights of white up through here. But right now it's kind of wet, so I'm going to just let it chill for a second. And we're going to hit it with our hair blow dryer. So give it a couple minutes and we're going to hit it with a hair blow dryer. If you have to leave, don't worry. This recording is um, going to be saved and you'll get it in a couple weeks. But we're just going to be hitting it with a hair blow dryer and then um, you'll be able to, once it's completely dry, you'll be hitting it with that wet, white or wet um, cloth and getting rid of the chalk lines, which should expose your blue lines and you can hit those with your marker and outline them. And then we'll just do a circle underneath for shadow. I'm just recapping in case you have to leave real quick. <laughs> and then we'll just, so we'll have the outline bear with our shadow. And then you can add in some shadow, more shadows and highlights to the bear as you need to. So we're gonna hit it with the hair blow dryer. Hopefully you guys can stay with us. If not, we understand. So, all right.
All righty. So I am then going to take my marker. Oh, I'm sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> and wipe off my chalk real quick. Sorry. I'm just drinking in the chat for everybody. If you'd like to share photos of your painting, which we would love, and you would I'd love to, to share see them. everyone. Uh, okay. Facebook, social media stuff. Uh, please email Nicole at Nicole at Emily's and Emily's at Hundred.org. I'm just dropping that in the chat for you. Also, if you have any questions about the artist refuge um, or would like to get signed up for getting alerts or anything like that, um, email Nicole and she will get you that information. Um, we should be having another paint night in May, so kind of watch for that on, on the Defenders. Uh, Facebook page, or if you sign up for the alerts, then you'll also get more work for that as well. And Carrie will be painting the National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, which is adjacent actually to the Arctic Refuge, um, but it's to the west. So, okay, cool. All right, so we wiped off all our chalk, and you see how it left those nice blue lines from our underpainting? We're just going to cover those up with our black. Uh, paint pen or Sharpie, if that's what you have. I am going to go in front of this ear, though, and I'm going to make a line so that it pushes that ear to the background. And then I'll just cover around it with my pen. So that makes it recede to the back. I'll cut, do the circle around the ear. And this is a little C for our ear shape. Do our little black nose. There's just a little, little dot at the front. And then we're going to go around and we're just going to lay in those lines that we just made with, we just uncovered from our chalk. So let's go around. Let the, let the paint line or the absent paint lines guide you. And my head is probably covering everything. So I'll sort of, it was an interesting way to draw. I feel sympathy for Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel for sure. Oh, I know, right? Let me draw your tail. Try not to cover it from the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And now's the time. If you want to turn the cameras, that'd be great. We'd love to see everybody's paintings. Um, don't feel self conscious or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's for everybody. Yeah. Everybody who wants to see the art of the art. All kind of in the same mindset. Mm -hmm. Every polar bear is different. We got Fred's, we got George's. We'll have a good time tonight. <laughs> 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 sort of start, yeah, sorry, we're a little bit behind. But, all right. Yes, his eyeball. I don't, don't want to forget that. And the eyeball is halfway between the ear and the little line right here. It's just a little, little dot. Just a, just a little guy right there. Just a little guy. And then we're going to paint with dark blue underneath it and just a circle, or sorry, more like an oval. So just going to go around. And we just go. And where we go, where we stop, nobody knows. I need my bigger brush. Let's go. So, and this blue is going to be our shadow underneath our polar bear. All right. You can add some darker ones out here if you want to. Just add some a little bit of dark blue kind of throughout the place. Spruce it up a little bit. Come on, Gary. <laughs> I still have some um, blue showing through on my polar bear, so I'm going to cover it up with a little bit of white. But thanks for joining us, you guys. And 
you can stay till the end and hopefully I get to see some of your guys' pictures. I'd love to love to see those. So yeah, we appreciate you joining us. So. Yeah, stick it through. I don't know if this is your first paint night or oh, oh yeah, first yeah. many times. <laughs> repeat, repeat offenders, you know, we get into <laughs> trouble. This is um a winter scene, obviously, but um right now actually it's setting them up, but they're still, you know, they're still getting like negative five degrees up there in the Arctic refuge. Um but it's warming up a little bit. They have a lot of sunlight, even down here in Anchorage where we are, where sunrise is at like six twenty-five and too early. Not a morning person. Or something. Yeah, yeah. basically our the best time of year, come up to the best time of year, and we don't really have a complete darkness anymore, and we're still getting glimpses of the aurora. So it's kind of fun up here right now. If you're not in Alaska, so I haven't ever been. <laughs> Just a little bit of what we get to enjoy. And we're here, we hit like 55 today, like I said earlier. And man, it was nice. It was like shorts and t shirt weather. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was I'll, really nice. Some of you are from, I don't know, Florida, still. Yeah. That was <laughs> quite the difference in the temperature amazing. between here and there. <laughs> I always wonder how many people have never seen snow. I'm like, it's such a common occurrence here. I'm like, I don't even like. Yeah. I still have snow in the front yard. Yeah. So Come see our front yard. Nice. I'm always amazed how much gunk builds up on top of the snow. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Well, like uh, driving through, like there's that highway pile, right? That's got that huge pile that looks, it looks like a big dirt pile, right? It's yeah, not. so we get so much snow through that um, they actually have to, there's this whole crew of like truck drivers and dump truck drivers that um, they have like this giant snow the road snow. heroes yeah and they just uh basically pick up all the snow in the parking lot because if they didn't we wouldn't have any really <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then they put it in these giant uh, snow piles all, all winter we have like a hundred foot snow pile on the side of the highway so like literally like instead of owning property you could own a lot to house snow and that's how you like make money <laughs> you know like all right so i'm just adding those highlights to those just some bright 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 whites to the tops that way that everything's dry you know you can definitely see it and all my polar bears all blocked in with beautiful um uh, beautifully consistent white hopefully it's like everybody's shy tonight. Nobody wants to show their polar bears. Oh, I want to see their polar bears. It's probably because everyone's still working. Because <laughs> I'm still working. I'm like, I don't know. I can get a little bit perfection-y, not going to lie. I get a little Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> this guy um, is uh, showing the real difference between not having as much sea ice, you know. <laughs> They're not used to it. Well, for seeing uh, with moss, so and I think around uh, the Arctic mm. Refuge. So, while that's your journey, we're getting all the snow and some things down to a place. Oh my gosh, so many seagulls fighting in front of uh. <laughs> This parking lot I was at the other day, I was like, "Wow, you are loud!" I forgot how loud you are. The robin, which I think it's common for most people, but robin, American robin, does have a toilet here. So when you see the robin singing late at night, you're like, "Hey, welcome back!" Start to see the geese come through again on the way back. And so the Arctic Refuge is a use, it's a huge um, resource for migratory birds going up from California and Mexico all over. In fact, I think every single state has a bird that comes up to um, either Arctic Refuge or the National Petroleum Reserve, which is just to the west. Really? So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. 
Alaska. Oh. See, everybody loves Alaska. You always, everybody likes to travel to Alaska. It's the prettiest place. And once you live here, I know people that are currently on that have lived here. They know it. Once you, once you live here, you never want to go anywhere else. <laughs> it's dangerous. Too pretty. Yeah. All right, I'm going to shine tonight. I'm <laughs> that's okay but i think we're gonna maybe stay on for another what couple yeah five or six five, minutes five or six minutes so yeah six fifteen and then i'm being a, i'm nitpicking it so it's fine because <laughs> <laughs> i want to see it i'm going to turn it on um yeah. They gotta get it, get all the details in. You never realize how much blue shows through until you get in there with that little brush and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much blue. Blue coming through. Come through. Okay. Yeah, this is cool because this is a very different program than what we've been last time. So it's more. It was very focused in on the face. Yeah. And less shot. less shape based. This is very shape based because I wanted it to be very easy for lots of people to draw. <laughs> yeah. A very talent to be able to accomplish. That's the one thing about the, the Alaska State bird I don't like is the is the mosquito. It's 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 very prevalent in one's life. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm kind of done fiddling with mine. So hopefully you guys send some pictures to Nicole, and so I get to see them. But it was lovely painting with you guys, and um, look forward to the recording if you guys missed it and we'll catch you guys up on the next one thanks for joining us <laughs>